Now, today's video we're going to talk about how to cross uh, tomatoes, also potatoes and aubergines and also peppers as well. Um, first of all, none of those will cross with each other because they belong to different species within the family. But, for instance, let's talk about tomatoes. We have a, with all of them actually, we have um, the flower is perfect. That means that there's a male part and a female part within one flower. And what also happens is you have, of course, the stigma, which is a, a tube. And then you have the anthers, and in this case, with these flowers, it's uh, surrounding tightly, usually, uh, the stigma. And it sheds pollen inwardly, so when the flower actually hangs down like this, and you shake it a little bit, uh, the pollen is inwardly released onto the stigma, so it's actually touching the stigma. And we need to be able to go into the flower and take away all the anthers uh, before the pollen is shed onto the stigma. And I'll show you that now in a minute as well. Um, there are some cases where the tomato will have, there will be different varieties where the stigma is slightly protruding and in some countries you can get quite a few uh, tomatoes will actually cross with each other but um, in, for instance, Switzerland and Ireland and Europe we don't have that problem um, there's no real pollination going on so the protruding stigma you might have 5% pollination uh, or natural crosses occurring now first of all we need to select the right kind of um, flower for to make sure that the actual pollen hasn't released on the uh, stigma yet. The stigma is already receptive but for instance this one here is still the petals are green so that would be way too early. This one here is a good candidate for pollen but the petals and the pollen has already petals have opened and the pollen has already released onto the stigma. And this one here is just about still okay and this one here is a little bit early just so that you know the differences and what we need to do is we need to just uh, very gently pull off the entire casing and you can see here we're left with just the stigma now since in this case I'm going to do a cross um, between a different variety of tomato and this variety here I've taken and selected a different flower uh, but the flower really needs to be open in order for the pollen to already have uh, shed as well. And what I do is I generally pull off the whole thing and I actually cheat a little bit because I just stick on to get the petals. But what I do is I, I stick on this anther tube very very carefully and it doesn't always work onto onto the stigma like that and then I can guarantee that the pollen will have actually shed inwards now what you can also do is because this flower will not be pollinated anymore it's not very interesting for bees or um, insects what you can also do is of course uh, three or four times a day go in there and just open up the anthers And actually you can see the pollen there. So this one is already pollinated. And just very lightly you could use a brush or something like that. Very lightly touch the stigma. Now as you can see we had success. I've done a cross and of course it's taken because uh, the tomato is swelling up. It wouldn't have done that otherwise. I also labelled it as well just to be sure um, I know where to find it. And the people here will also give it to me when... Uh, they have a sting as well. Um, the important thing here is that we want to make sure that we eventually stabilize this so I'm going to grow out all the seeds of this one tomato and I'll eventually um, in future years will be able to make a stable heirloom variety as well and that's what I plan to do with all the different vegetables that I'm crossing as well. Now we're here with uh, some aubergines I planted earlier and the first thing I wanted to mention is that all the plants that don't have um, tightly fused anthers around the stigma you have to kind of do a, a system of bagging and the reason for that is, and I'll show you that now in a minute, uh, the reason for that is of course that foreign pollen can land on um, the cross and then you don't know whether you had uh, the cross that you intended or a totally different cross. Now this is only um, a problem if you have more than one variety of let's say aubergines growing in your area. We have a lot of Colorado potato beetle here. Maybe I'll just quickly show you that as well. I need to get rid of them actually because they will 
munch up my aubergines in no time whatsoever. Now we'll have a look at peppers and see what they look like. This is actually going to be used as an example for all the other plants as well. It's very similar so I'm not going to go into too much detail on the other ones. But all you have to do is, now I've taken off the leaves here because I only have the smaller bag. If I had a bigger bag I could just put it over the whole leaves as well. But it's very very simple. Um, first of all here we have a flower that is already open and you can see that these are the anthers and any kind of bee could have landed on there and in between here added some pollen uh, there's a good chance that that could have happened. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put a bag on top of the actual flower nice and loose. Stick it together like that and put a string around it and as you see the actual flower opening eventually when it's really open like this one here the pollen should be uh, ready and you can actually use it. I would also do several of these um, because then you have more chances of having pollen as well. Now I'm going to show you an example of how to do the, the female part so in about as soon as your actual flower has opened you can then select a flower like this one it's still closed I actually opened that um, earlier so it was still closed and you just pull off the petals and then you have to pull off the anthers as well not damaging the stigma now no bee is going to go near this flower now because it's completely uninteresting they're just going to ignore it so there will be no transfer of pollen but you can actually bag it afterwards as well and then all you got to do is take your flower that you had bagged previously maybe take off the petals as well but be very gentle because there will be you can see already the, the pollen is actually shedding onto the petals so I would just very gently just go like that and you've transferred the pollen and then just stick your bag on top of it as well until the fruit has formed and then you can take the bag off again. And that's all there really is to bagging uh, flowers properly. Now I'm here in the field of potatoes and this is a potato seed and when we talk about seed potatoes we usually talk about the small tubers that we use for seed potatoes. This then would be actually the seed uh, of the potato in a small fruit like tomato but it never kind of gets big and red it just stays that kind of small green uh, size and that's important because first of all this is the flower and slightly protruding uh, stigma and fused uh, cones pretty much so pollination is about five percent but what i think is great about potatoes is that you can actually take two plants two different varieties do the cross like with the tomatoes and then when you sow the seed next year you're going to have a pretty much straight away a new variety and the reason for that is of course because you take the tubers of the plant that you've sown and because it's vegetative kind of um, uh, multiplication you will eventually end up with um, just the same plant again and again and again so you have a stable new variety a pretty much instant variety next year and it's just a lot of fun to make a a new kind of variety. You could do something like a blight resistant variety. Um, there are many many possibilities with potatoes so I hope you enjoyed this video as always and um, if you have any questions, if I wasn't clear on something, sometimes it's difficult to explain all this thing about the breeding, uh, then ask away down below in the comment and thanks for watching.